Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Welcome to our first week in Lent midweek service. And uh, what we're doing uh, during this Lent is revisiting a series of sermons that I did actually during the time of the pandemic, but reapplying them to now because I went back and I kind of looked at them and it was a pretty interesting series, but it was really flavored in a sense by the unsettled times in which we were during that period of time. And I thought, you know, we could get more out of these scripture verses and these thoughts by kind of coming back to them and maybe not having this sort of strange time when we're not meeting uh, facing us and, and hopefully maybe get uh, a better perspective, you know, maybe in the long uh, term sense, so that it's not just, uh, you know, as we, as we face all of this doom and gloom stuff, but rather more like as we, uh, as we contemplate this thing in, in, not only in the sense of how it affects our lives now, but also how it then, you know, gets to the broader scheme of things, the, the kind of the, the rhythms and the things we know to be true and what have you. So that's, that's what we're going to do with these Lent services, is, is uh, the, the, the sermons have been fairly extensively re rewritten, so, so it's, it's kind of like taking a decent series and revisiting it from a whole new angle and hopefully we'll get something out of that for our Lenten devotions during this time of Lent this uh, year. Uh, so we are using uh, Responsive Prayer 2 on page uh, 285 in the fourth part of the hymnal, and uh, we will be only singing one song tonight, which is the... Uh, the hymn, Just As I Am Without One Plea. And the uh, sermon tonight is Pilate the Coward, kind of looking at how Pilate, in the face of a lot of turmoil and political and social pressure, decided to back down and go with the flow in order to make life easier for himself instead of doing the right thing. And so... And that's what we're going to start off with and talk about what happens when we feel that same temptation. So, uh, I would ask uh, everyone to pay, turn to page uh, 285 in the fourth part of the hymnal, and let's rise as we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him with long life. I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge, no evil shall be allowed to befall you. No plague come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. When he calls to me, I will answer you. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. The reading 
is from John 19, verses 1 to 8. Then Pilate took Jesus and flogged him. And the soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head and arrayed him in a purple robe. They came up to him saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and struck him with their hands. Pilate went out again and said to them, See, I am bringing him out to you that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Behold the man! When the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die, because he has made himself the Son of God. When Pilate heard this statement, he was even more afraid. This is the word of the Lord. We now sing the office hymn, Just As I Am, without one plea.
O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The sermon is Pilate the Coward. It's from the text that we read earlier. Have you ever wondered about Pontius Pilate? His family name is Pontius. They went from being a powerful clan in the Samnite Confederation in central Italy to being common plebs after Rome conquered them in the third century BC. They worked their way up to the middle class. After Christianity became the Roman state religion, several clan members even became church officials. The name Pilate is an English word and uh, it used to sound more like Pilates, the exercise program because it was essentially a calc of Pilatus, the Latin name. Pilatus is a nickname that means one who is good with the Roman javelin. Pontius Pilate was a military man who used his aggressive nickname more than his personal name. We don't even know what his personal name was. He became the uh, fifth governor of Judea around A.D. 26. He became one of the two longest serving governors in Judea. For six years, Pilate had no boss. After he got a boss, the Syrian legate, Pilate was fired for being too brutal as he put down unrest in Samaria. When he was recalled in A.D. 37, Caiaphas also was fired. After all that drama, Pilate retired. His life kind of sounds very human, like us. Some politicians don't care about justice. Caiaphas and the Sadducees were like that. They casually uh, broke the law. They flaunted their ability to do that sort of thing. In Jesus' day, they held fake trials, got false witnesses, bribed political officials, and tampered with evidence. Today, we've got politicians that do pretty much the same thing. Other politicians may know right from wrong, but they don't want to rock the boat. They just sort of, you know, they kvetch a little bit about how things are going, but, you know, I can't deal with that. No, I'm not going to touch it. They, they tend to switch sides, depending upon how the winds of fortune are blowing. And uh, they usually have a satchel full of excuses, and they'll throw a few at you if, if they need to. Pilate knew that Caiaphas was wrong, but he still caved. 
he shut up and he kept his job, well, for at least four years. Then it was too late. So in the Garden of Gethsemane, Judas led the priest's men to arrest Jesus. He was taken to Anas and Caiaphas, where they accused Jesus of blasphemy. No two witnesses could agree, but Jesus said under oath that he was the Messiah. The Sadducees wanted Jesus dead. These elites saw Jesus as the worst of the Pharisees. Jesus had to go. Since Pilate did not care about blasphemy, Caiaphas invented a charge for a capital crime, treason. Now, that's going to stick. The term Son of God was a title that was used only by Caesar in this time. So if you call yourself Son of God, it kind of looks like you want to start a rebellion. So Pilate, even if he didn't care at all about blasphemy, he took treason very seriously. And that is why he led Jesus after our text happens, into the inner courtyard and asked him if he, Jesus, were a king. And of course, Jesus says, yes, I am a king, but his kingdom was not of this world. Jesus spoke of a kingdom based on the preaching of truth. This meant to Pilate that there was no reason to suspect any kind of insurrection or rebellion on Jesus' part. You know, Pilate is like, what is truth? Most Romans thought that religion was a civic duty that you had to do as a good Roman, but it wasn't a personal belief. It was something that was there for show, kind of like a, a pocket square in your suit pocket. You know, this one's for showing. This one's for blowing. Uh, that sort of thing. And, uh, but it wasn't something you believed in. It wasn't something you invested in. The gods were just there as a social custom. It's kind of like that in Japan and other places still today. And that's why a lot of people, there are countries where a lot of people will go to temples and shrines and do things there but it's not like they have any personal faith. They just do it because you're supposed to do it. Simple as that. So after Paul was taken captive in Jerusalem, Paul preached to Felix, Festus, and Herod Agrippa. He made these three men fear and wonder if Jesus' resurrection and the final judgment could, in fact, be true, Acts 26, verse 28. But all three of these men rejected the message of the gospel. For them, Jesus was that weird guy that Pilate had crucified. Still, the gospel spread across the empire. Jesus was alive. Yet many rejected that message, even as others received it and were glad. No one knows if Pilate heard the gospel and was saved or if he was condemned as a great sinner. Many are called, but few are chosen, Matthew 10, verse 16. Our faith is a precious gift. Without it, we would be just like Pilate. During Lent, we should rededicate ourselves to daily Bible study in order to strengthen our faith. Jesus says, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciple, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. John 8, verses 31 to 32. Pilate, well, he was afraid. He had been on the job for six years. It was a low-prestige job at the backwater end of the Roman world. And Caiaphas wanted Jesus dead. And he was willing to throw Pilate under the bus in order to make it happen. 
He basically said, if you don't crucify this guy, you are no friend of Caesar's and I will tattle. But, you know, Pilate was this problem solver kind of guy. He was very violent and heavy handed, but he knew how to solve problems. One way to fix a problem is to give that problem to somebody else. And that's just what Pilate did. Jesus had come from Galilee. Galilee was the territory of Herod Antipas. So to Herod, Jesus went. This had an added bonus. Herod had been uh, kind of fearful. He had heard about Jesus, and he also had this feeling of guilt over killing John the Baptist. Now, Pilate was giving Herod face. He was allowing Herod to see this amazing prophet that he was wondering about. And with this interview, Herod uh, uh, became convinced that both Jesus and John were a pair of frauds, and so he no longer really felt guilty about it anymore. Uh, he was very friendly toward Pilate uh, as opposed to uh, beforehand. But even though he was friendly toward Pilate, he still sent Jesus back to Pilate. He's like, no, this, this is not going to be my problem. You have fun with it. Uh, how many people today pass the buck? They want kids, for example, to be good, yet they let the TV and the computer games and teachers and others do all the parenting. For decades, parents who were not religious would drop their kids off at Sunday school. Maybe, ah, just give them a little morality. The only thing it taught them is the throwaway character of religion. Because if, if all Sunday school is worth is a place to dump your kid while you go have coffee at, you know, at the, the bagel joint, um, your kids ain't dumb. They're going to figure that one out. And they're going to mimic that when they grow up. Fun fact, your goals start with you. We cannot afford to pass the buck like Pilate did. So, Pilate knew that Jesus should go, for, go free. He didn't do anything wrong. He said it multiple times, but he listened to the majority opinion who were yelling, crucify him. You know, starting 50 years ago, the U.S. Supreme Court decided cases related to abortion, homosexuality, and marriage, and uh, various things related there, too. Today, We've got a Supreme Court justice that can't tell the difference between little boys and little girls. Sometimes the majority decision is the wrong decision. Have you ever faced peer pressure like that, like Pilate did? What would prevent you from going along to get along, especially if somebody was threatening to rat you out to your boss or worse, get you in trouble with the law. You know, as Christians, we, we actually have an ability to deal with those situations. We drink milk in order to get strong bones. So what do we do? We read scripture to get a stronger faith that helps us not to be a go-along to get along like Pilate. Being a coward shows a lack of faith. Pilate had Jesus flogged. That itself would have killed Jesus, but he would have died later, making it not Pilate's problem. But Caiaphas wanted Jesus dead there and then. He wanted him dead in Pilate's custody because Caiaphas was scared of the Pharisees and the Zealots. He needed to blame a partner in crime. So, guess what happened? Pilate blamed Caiaphas right back. He washed his hands of Jesus' blood guilt. Caiaphas and his cronies accepted the blame, the guilt of that blood. Pilate also got back in another way. When he crucified Jesus, Pilate had a sign put on the cross, the king of the Jews. 
Caiaphas got angry, but Pilate's response was clear. You wanted me to execute Jesus for treason. Fine, but if he dies, he must be a king in order to commit treason. And guess what? He's your king. Deal with it. This pair of frenemies, Pilate and Caiaphas, decided to swim, sink or swim together. Well, you know what? Four years after Jesus was crucified, they both sank together. If neither Pilate nor Caiaphas repented, they will stand before Jesus and be judged to go into everlasting death. The outer darkness where there is, no we where there is only weeping and gnashing of teeth, Matthew 25, verse 46. We, we might want to give in to the pressure. We might want to do bad even though we know better. We might be tempted by rewards. We might be threatened by punishments. We might want to make excuses, but Jesus didn't do any of that. He became the paschal victim for us, a victim of a sham trial, abused and murdered. He seemed totally powerless, yet he did not fight back. 1 Peter 2, verses 22 to 23. Jesus may have seemed powerless, but the fact remains that he was in complete control of the situation. You see, your boss cannot send you to hell. None of your co-workers can send you to hell. Your neighbors, your friends, and your family, they can't send you to hell. The government has no power at all to sentence you to eternal damnation. Nor can any of them, not the richest person or the most powerful politician, save you. All of the people in this life that can threaten you and hassle you are totally powerless to hurt you permanently. They, they could not hurt Jesus permanently. And guess what? You have been baptized into that very same Jesus Christ. Romans 6, verse 3. Only Jesus Christ, the one who was both crucified and condemned for you, can judge the living and the dead. Offering paradise on the one hand or damnation on the other. And Jesus, whose precious blood was shed for us, we have forgiveness and redemption. Colossians 1 verse 14 and Ephesians 1 verse 7. How could the martyrs face the fire, the lions, the gladiators, torture, and death. How do today's martyrs face the jihadis, the communists, the Marxists, and legal persecution in our country? All of them trust Jesus' word to be the truth. Lent always teaches us two things, how sinful mankind is and how gracious and forgiving God is. Even Pilate, if he came to faith, would be saved and not cast out. John 6, verse 37. Now is the time of salvation. Romans 13, verse 11. And so we pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your loving kindness, your suffering, and your forgiveness. Please strengthen my faith and help me trust in you so that I may show your courage, not Pilate's cowardice. Amen. Peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which goes beyond all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the one true faith, even unto life everlasting. Amen. We now turn to page 286 in the hymnal for the versicles.
then you can remain seated. Hear my prayer, O Lord, let my cry come to you. In the day of my trouble, I call upon you. For you answer me. Hide your face from my sins. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Cast me not away from your presence. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. And uphold me with a loving spirit. Because your steadfast love is better than life. My will praise you. For you have been my help. And in the shadow of your wings, I will sing for joy. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. I give thanks to you, O Lord, my God, with my whole heart. And I will glorify your name forever. May all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who love your salvation say evermore, Save your people and bless your heritage. Be their shepherd and bear them forever. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Listen to my plea. Let us pray. O Lord God, you led your ancient people through the wilderness and brought them to the promised land. Guide the people of your church that, following our Savior, we may walk through the wilderness of this world towards the glory of the world to come. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. We pray together the evening collect. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me in so this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless us, defend us from all evil, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.